Welcome to another unit in business mathematics. This time I'm going to talk about the difference between simple and compound interest. And well, basically before we do this, the idea behind interest in general. So if we start, the basic idea is there's a creditor who gives capital to a borrower for a certain period of time. And due to the borrower getting the capital, getting the money, he has to pay a fee for using this money, for getting this money. This fee is what we call interest. And then there's basically two forms of interest, which we first call either normal interest or simple linear interest and compound interest. And the difference is relatively easy. With the normal interest calculations, once interest is paid, it's actually paid out. So it does not stay on the specific savings account. It's paid out, it's taken out. So the basis for the interest calculation always remains the same. With compound interest, it's different. There, the interest payment after the first period remains in the savings account. So it increases the interest base. So the amount on which interest is paid increases each period that interest needs to be paid. So let's take a look how this turns out in the end. In general, we can note that independent of which type of interest we're talking about, if the interest is paid over longer periods of time, the longer the capital remains with the borrower, the higher the overall interest payments will be, independent whether we're talking about simple or compound interest. Also, so that we have a better understanding what we are actually talking about, let's, before we go into the details, discuss some notations. So here, when we talk about the interest rate, so the percentage of the original investment, original capital, we have to pay as a fee each period. That's the interest rate and we denote this here with a small i. If instead we're talking about the so-called interest factor, that's just one plus i, and that's what we denote with a q. So it's basically the interest rate plus one. Then we have the number of periods, number of periods which we actually get the capital, can use the capital or save the capital. The number of t, that's if we have generally an interest rate based, for example, on yearly interest and the periods are the number of years that we save it. But interest is actually not paid on a yearly basis, but for example, on a monthly basis or quarterly basis, then we have sub periods, sub period interest payments. And here, that's t, small t, that's how many subperiods we consider. So if we work on a yearly basis, interest is paid on a yearly basis, interest rate is on a yearly basis, t would be one. If however, the interest rate is per year and we work on a quarterly basis, then the small t would be four. If interest is paid on a monthly basis, small t would be 12. We will go into detail in this regard in a future topic as well. Then we have the initial capital stock, the present value, so what we invest, and Kn, the final capital stock or the final value, what we will have after the number of periods passed, after we saved for n periods. Well, with this notation, we can start with the simple interest here, as I said earlier, the interest which is paid at the end of 
each period does not remain in the savings account but it's paid out so it does not increase the interest stock so the capital which is used in the next period for the new interest calculation so each period we get the same interest payments this will result in this formula which I can illustrate in detail. So first off, after the end periods, first off, I'm left here with the original capital stock. And for each period, I get one interest payment. So if I have N periods, I have N interest payments. And each interest payment is I, the interest rate, times K0. So I have in total interest of n times i times k0. Well, if I have k0 plus n times i times k0, I can actually factor out k0, giving me this easy formula. Well, while this is straightforward, let's still have a look at a quick example. Here we have a bank account which contains 3000 euros and money is saved for four years. So n is four. What is the overall capital's worth if interest payments with an interest rate of 3% per year are withdrawn at the end of each year? So this means we're talking about simple interest. So I just collect the values I have. For the K0, I have 3000. For the N, I have 4. And for the I, I have 3% or 0.03. If I insert these values in my formula, here I get 3000 times 1 plus 4 times 0 0.03, which in the end results a final value after four years of 3360 euros. Well, that's easy. That's the simple interest. So let's switch to the compound interest. Now the money remains in the savings account. So each period, the amount of money which is used for the new interest calculations increases again. So interests grow over time. Here we can start step by step. So after one year, first off, I have my original payment. That's this part, my original investment, that's part. And I have one interest payment, so I times K0. Again, I can factor out K0. After the second period, I'm doing the same thing again. So I have one K1 and I get interest on K1. If I now replace K1 with this part here, I will get K0 times 1 plus i times 1 plus i. So in total, after two periods, I have k0 times 1 plus i to the power of 2. Then I can do this for the third period. Here I start with k2. I still have k2 after the period plus one interest payment. Again, I can replace k2 by this part here or by that one, giving me in the end k0 times 1 plus i to the power of 3. And I think we already see some kind of structure here. So if I continue this onwards, I can say in general, kn is always the kn minus 1, so the capital worth one period before this, times the interest factor, 1 plus i. Or in general, if I base this on k0, it's k0 times 1 plus i to the power of n. This here, that's the main formula for this first part, which we will be working with. So the final value of my investment is my original value times the interest factor to the power of the number of periods. So this is the general formula. And, well, we can then use this formula, and we're going to do this in future sessions, use this formula to also reformulate this for K0, giving us the net present value, for I, K1, 
giving us the internal interest rate or the effective interest rate or for n giving us the duration. However, before we get there, let's first take a look how this works in practical terms. So take a look at an example. So here we have the example. Again, amount of 5,000 euro is deposited in an account with yearly interest rate now of 6%. What it, is its value after eight years? So n is eight. So we simply take our formula with an interest rate of 6% or 0 0.06, an n of eight, k0 of 5,000, and we insert these into our formula from the slide before, giving us as a final result 7,969.24. So here in this case, after eight years with an interest rate of 6%, we have roughly 7,969 euros. And well, that's basically all there is to the idea between or the difference between simple and compound interest and the general idea how to work with interest. Well, as I said, that's it. So I hope you enjoyed it. And I say, see you and until next time.